There's been an unsurprising number of electric vehicle startups going bankrupt in 2023. Following what was once one of the best times to be an investor in the EV space has turned into a real nightmare for retail as well as institutional investors as these companies with their lack of cash and high debts are simply unable to survive in this kind of economic environment. And as it turns out, a lot of the issues that these startups faced stemmed from one common problem, which is being too fast at the wrong time. The latest victim of this bankruptcy filings is Volta Technologies, which is a company out of Sweden that developed this urban delivery van that was powered mostly by batteries. Now, if you can't tell the difference between Volta and some of the other concept trucks we've seen on the market, I really can't blame you because there's just been so many concept companies over the past four years that have come out onto the space pitching their own types of products. And although this is a great strategy and certainly raises awareness about the benefits of electrification, there's one key issue that a lot of these startups faced that in my opinion is the sole reason why they're now starting to struggle. Companies by the name of Line Electric, Lightning E Motors, Proterra, Microvast, and even Romeo Power all faced this common issue, which is the fact that they did not have any sort of market-leading competitive advantage, whether it being the first to launch a product in a certain market or niche or having some sort of breakthrough technology that sets apart the usage and driver experience, most of these startups really didn't have anything to show for themselves apart from a unique design. Whether it be companies that supply battery modules or build electric buses and trucks from the ground up, essentially most of these companies weren't able to scale up to mass production without having to burn an insane amount of cash and raise money from investors. And as you can see by this rendering right here, this truck, which was developed by Proterra, in and of itself is essentially a rebadged truck from another company fitted with Proterra batteries. The company essentially didn't really do any major work in the form of marketing the vehicle, selling it to the rice consumers, as well as developing the secondary infrastructure and solutions so that customers can easily shift to them from their conventional trucks and buses. And this kind of advantage is extremely important to have in a market when there are so many competitors flooding into the space. And as interest rates go up due to the monetary tightening from the US government, these companies are gonna have basically no chance of raising additional money unless they have some sort of significant backing from an OEM or a parts provider that is globally renowned. Not only did many of the companies that were developing these trucks from the ground up not end up really selling any to consumers or even dealers, but none of them really even had plans for mass production from the ground up within their own company. These prototypes were all being built by hand and no automation was essentially being used to develop these trucks from the ground up, which certainly is a cause of concern because at the end of the day, profits will only come as you ramp up production and achieve economies of scale. This is why traditional and legacy OEMs have such an easy time launching a product to the market today. But obviously the main issue with those companies is they don't have any sort of proprietary technology and innovative brand image or the network to really establish the right kind of sales channels. Whereas startups like Teva Motors, Lightning E-Motors, Proterra, Lion Electric, Volta, you name it, have some sort of brand image and new technology platforms that can be easily potentially scaled up. The only thing is they need the right money and the right partners. And because a lot of these companies were intertwined within themselves, for example, Proterra supplying the battery packs for Volta, which was another startup, there is a lingering effect of one bankruptcy to another. Similar to when Romeo Power got acquired by Nikola Motors, competition got phased out. And at the end of the day, it's going to be the strategic acquirers by the likes of, for example, Nikola Motors, who buy some of these distraught companies cheaply 
that get the competitive advantage. Volta in this case, similar to Lion Electric, ended up facing a bottleneck with supplying their battery packs. Because obviously when Proterra went bankrupt, they really could not supply the right battery packs at the right time to scale up the production of the vehicle. And from the looks of it, it's pretty clear that Volta put a lot more emphasis on the design, the industrial design, as well as the looks of their specific trucks, instead of making sure they can get the right supply chain and the right partners. There's a difference between trying to stand out in the market and being a good business. Although many EV startups right now lose money, there's only a select few of them that are on the right track to scale up production, sell to the right customers, and take on the heat in the short term that a company needs to, to really please its investors. And it's pretty clear since the IPO frenzy of 2021 that a lot of these companies that did go public and raise a lot of money essentially had no idea how to scale up manufacturing or offset components from other OEMs. Cash is certainly one issue, and for the companies like Proterra, who already had a production line going, and so many customers who themselves had little to no cash available, the writing was clearly on the wall. Proterra's production line was already up and running, and they did annual revenue north of $250 million. But as it turns out, a lot of this revenue came from companies that were not nearly as financially strong or didn't have the right customer base to handle this kind of interest rate environment. And at the end of the day, the commercial sector is much harder to tame than the consumer sector where you can sell vehicles direct to consumer and run ad campaigns that can convince buyers from your competition. With electric buses and trucks, you really have to work a lot more with stakeholders, the government, as well as independent parties to make sure that there's right leads for the right times. And it doesn't seem like that was the case with a lot of these companies that have gone under so far this year. Don't get me wrong, folks. There's nothing wrong with trying something new. And all of these startups I just mentioned are doing their absolute best to commercialize these vehicles, which we obviously need on the road. But the reality is you have to be a good salesperson and a business person alongside being a good technical person and having the right IP. And as it turns out, some of these companies simply did not have enough of the former to weather the current storms we're going through right now, on top of the intertwined nature of their supply chain, as well as the lack of any sort of real market related competitive advantage. Are there going to be any more bankruptcies to come in 2023? As usual, folks, let me know your thoughts on the situation down in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.